Lord. Fabulous. So thank you guys so much for coming tonight to our One Team University training. And we have had such a blast with these calls, just people from all over the world joining us, incredible leaders. And you know, the what what can you take away from this? Well, the purpose of these calls is to link arms. You know, in isogenics is one of the biggest differences in our in our company. Um, compared to the rest is just this philosophy of truly um, linking arms with anybody and everybody and in helping the entire company rise because we want to support Jim and Kathy Coover in their in their goals and their goals are big the company's big and each of our individual goals are are big too so I hope you guys make friends from these calls feel free to connect with people use each other for three-way calls and and you know start hooking up for you know team meetings all that kind of stuff but um, also, um, I don't know about you guys, but my team got sick of hearing from me all the time. <laughs> so this has been really, really fun to bring in leaders from all over the world and hear how they're doing it and what has been helpful in them. And we're learning so much from each other. So it's been just a great adventure. Um, the one thing I'm going to share with you guys before we get started here with our guest is obviously try to be in a place where there's not a lot of distractions. Okay. And, and really just get into the zone right now. I know it's hard. We're moms and dads. We have busy lives. We have a lot going on, school and the hectic life. So just de-stress for a second. Shake it off. Shake off your day. You know, breathe, relax, and let's get ready to be lifted. Because I know that we have somebody on the call tonight who is so special and has changed thousands of lives and has been such an inspiration to to a large amount of people. And I've only had the chance of meeting this beautiful woman um, once in person. And I, ha I can't even tell you how many wonderful things I've heard about her from other people. And, and I'm just so grateful that we get to link arms with the best people in the world. So um, tonight we have uh, Carolyn um, on the call with us. And this is a busy woman, guys. So she's just traveling all over the world. I mean, she just barely got back into the US. And, you know, she's a five-star Crystal Executive, six-star Golden Circle. She won the President's Quest. She was woman of isogenics. I mean, that alone is a pretty big deal and just speaks volumes of the, of the woman that she is. Um, but what, what really tugged at my heartstrings was her story. And I know that Carolyn has been... Let's see here. Let's see here. I'm going to go ahead and mute that. Yeah. So I know that she has been a missionary in Guatemala where she spends a lot of time. She is a CEO of Project Hopeful, um, and that started in 2006. She's a huge advocate for keeping families intact around the world and in setting orphan kids with special needs into families. I mean, <laughs> how incredible is this, guys? Um, she is a wife to kill. She has 15 kids. You guys heard me right. So all of you thinking that life is busy with two or three, she has 15 kids, um, by eight by adoption. So I want you guys to really think about this, eight by adoption. I know that she's going to share her story, so I'll let her do that. Um, and she's also a grandma to five. And if I could look half as good as her as a grandma, I'm going to be really, really, really happy. But all I can say leading into her is just, guys, this is the freedom this is the freedom this company provides, that you can be an individual as great as Carolyn and have the vehicle to change lives all over the world and be a part of something bigger, even bigger than Isogenics' vision, but your own vision, your personal vision, and I'm so proud of her. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that time over to her and, and let her share her wisdom. Guys, please use the chat box while she's speaking, and I'm going to be taking notes this is recorded, so you'll have it. You'll have the notes saved, so we'll share things if she mentions anything we want to save. Um, and then if you have any questions while she's talking, please use the chat box, and I'll make sure that she hears those questions. Okay? Good? Thumbs up? Good? All right. Miss Carolyn, thank how are you. you? Thank you. Thank you for that very generous intro. Um, you know, the best part about Isogenics, like you kind of led into, is the fact that um, it is a place where passion meets resources, and it and your passion can far, far exceed the amazing thing we have going with Isogenics, and it is a vehicle, no doubt, to pursue 
other goals and other things, you know, depends what it is. Doesn't make anybody's um, passions and goals any less big or important because my, my bio sounds quite extraordinary, but what I love to um, be, bless you, <laughs> what I love to be able to, to do almost to a fault is to kind of expose my 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 faults and my difficulties and and really present myself as the spaz that I am and and be real about the fact that whether you have no kids one kid or 15 kids that stuff seems difficult and you know there's obstacles that all of us have to get past to do things so it's not like oh she has 15 kids she does something magical because when I had one two and three kids I thought I, I don't even know how I'll survive to the next day. So I just want to be that be clear that way because I'm really nothing. I'm not a big deal. I'm very naive and I and I, I move in things without really knowing what I'm moving in and have had some great blessings doing that. So um, just to give you a real quick um, testimony about how this all started for me was that uh, I had adopted our last little guy, Isaac, and um, I spent seven weeks in Ukraine. He was uh, quite a handful and far more of, of a situation than I imagine he has Down syndrome. Two of my kids have Down syndrome. And um, he was non and uh, just not anything that we thought we could handle in a situation of adoption. I thought I'd, I was already tapped out in so many ways and we thought that we thought that we were adopting a child that was more engaged and more capable, and I was shocked by what was happening, but knew in my heart that this was what God wanted us to do. And um, long story short, we said yes to Isaac, but the seven weeks in Ukraine, I got really, really even more exhausted than typical. I didn't feel well. I put on 14, 15 pounds. Um, I, I honestly did not know how I was going to be able to survive when I got home. It scared me. I started to think, okay, he's, he's seven. He's the size of a two year old, but what if, you know, you know, when he gets a little bit bigger and I can't handle him, like what's going to happen? I started to really age started to get really amplified to me, all kinds of things. Like I felt sore and ill equipped. And, um, by the grace of God, that was, that was March, beginning of March when I finally came home with him. And, uh, end of April, Deanna Falchuk introduced the concept of isogenics to me. And um, really, I was like, whatever, as far as this is the magical thing, because I've been pursuing fitness related things. I was a vegetarian. I had, I'd done the gamut since I was about 12 and really got active when I was 16. I'm 46 now. So I had heard and done and tried and seen everything, was obsessed with weight and uh, really struggled in a lot of ways my whole life. So hearing there's this magic pill, um, I didn't really necessarily buy it, but I trusted and loved Deanna. So that was really all that matters. And that's a really key point here. Um, trust base and love because we do have something that sounds too good to be true. But my, my connection was my trust base with Deanna. So I tried it and needless to say, um, the first week I was really upset with Deanna, uh, <laughs> cause I did not feel well. I didn't have that miraculous the next day. Felt fantastic. It took me about a week, but on the seventh day, it was like the heavens parted and the angels sang and my life changed drastically from that day till now. I, I still can't even believe it. I can't wrap my head around it. Um, and you know, with that, so many of other things have happened. We gave it to our kids. You know, they've progressed. Our kids with Down syndrome, Isaac, the one that we thought would not be able to do anything now these years later is doing all kinds of stuff. You know, he couldn't use the toilet. He couldn't feed himself. He couldn't walk. And now he's, he's doing all those things. The only thing he's not doing right now is verbally communicating, but he's making eye contact and, you know, just doing some amazing things that love and nutrition um, can, can do. And, and so I'm just so, I'm so grateful. But again, that trust base was really, really, really huge. Um, another key point of our testimony was that in, you know, in the midst of all this, when I can hardly get up out of bed, 
said, I, I have this thing that I feel like God wants us to move our whole family to Guatemala and serve. As part of our ministry, we're all over the place. We're in Ethiopia, Uganda, Ukraine, and Guatemala wasn't really on the radar. And for some things that happened, it suddenly became on the radar. And uh, my husband was a painter and decorator, so we really didn't have anything. <laughs> we didn't have a savings account. We had nothing. And the idea of fundraising, having, you know, we had 11, 12 kids in the house at the time, 13 kids in the house at the time, 13, um, ranging from age two to 22 or 23 at that time. And um, I just knew that there was no way fundraising was going to happen to be able to move our size of a family to the other side of the world to serve. I didn't quite know how it was going to happen. Um, and, you know, back to this where passion meets resources, I didn't really see the value of it initially and didn't know how it would happen. But as I simply began to share the things that were happening in my family, very, very passively, not even aggressively, just kind of sharing with my trust base, with social media, I, I pretty much did the whole initial part in social media, just saying, hey, guys, this is what's happening. Um, it took off like wildfire. It doesn't always happen like that for everyone, and I don't want to misrepresent every, anything. Um, I have to be clear that we had had a lot of media attention over the few years. So I had, um, we had a lot of national and international, so I had um, quite a base on social media that I, you know, that was there already for me, but we had, I'd had them on there for years. So just kind of by living life, our regular life, as whack as it is, people got to know me and became engaged and, and I just pretty much shared life for the most part. And, um, so it, it went, it went bonkers right off the bat. Um, thank God for Deanna. I'm not somebody that picks up on things really quick. I, I don't have time. I'm chasing kids. I'm, you know, I'm doing my thing. Um, and, uh, really all I had to do at that point in time was be coachable. And in a matter of goodness, um, five months, I was in a position to retire my husband and Within 11 months, I was able to move my kids, my whole family to Guatemala. So I want to be clear that this is a vehicle, a viable vehicle to actually move in your passions and in your callings outside of isogenics. Your whole world doesn't have to become isogenics, although that's a good world too. Believe me, I, I prefer that one a lot of times. Um, so we did. We took off and we moved for a year. And uh, we lived in, in Guatemala, and we actually didn't want to come back, and a lot of other circumstances made it to where we had to. But um, we, stayed, we stayed in Guatemala, and that year in Guatemala, um, you know, as we're acclimating and as I'm not learning Spanish, turns out something blocked that. I am not superwoman there either, could not hardly learn a lick of Spanish other than ordering things from the market or whatever. But um, – and maybe I should have been learning Spanish instead of building my business, but I built my business instead. At nighttime, when I got home, I would, um, I would just do what I had to do in the evenings on my bed and hope that I could get people to see what was happening and how awesome it was. And, and really, in those, in those ways, just by sharing, it had started to become quite, I, I hate to say effortless, but because I was consistently sharing. I was being consistent. That's the only thing I knew how to do because really I didn't understand the business part. I didn't understand the compensation plan. I didn't understand so many things. I need to make that clear. I was so sloppy. I had a lot to take care of, whether it's one kid or 10 kids or 15 kids. It was a lot for me. So to, to be able to say that in any circumstance, you don't have to know this whole thing. You just move, be consistent and believe in what you're doing and live life while being a product of the product. That's really what I did, even from there. And mind you, I had to smuggle my stuff to Guatemala. You didn't just get a shipment on your doorstep. This is a third world country. So I was still even there committed to being um, 
a product of the product. And thank God, because I think really in so many ways, that's one of the only reasons I was able to survive and have the energy that it took to be able to, to do this. Um, so there was a lot of mistakes, a lot of, um, you know, dumb things I posted using the word isogenics. Don't do that, by the way. Like I did a lot of sloppy, dumb things. Deanna and I joked about it at um, one of the last events we spoke at. We actually posted, you know, a couple years worth of bloopers of things that we were we were posting. But the the reality was, it didn't didn't hurt anything, you know, terribly. And in the end, we succeeded. We just pushed through it and um, really. Because of my limited time, and I want to make this clear as well, Deanna and Tracy and Dana, like so many of my, my not just my, my upline, my coach, but my, my team in general, um, they knew my limitations. They understood my limitations. And I want to make this clear. I don't care who enrolled you. I don't care if they're active or not. I don't care if they handhold, don't handhold aren't around when you ask or have questions, there is no excuse in the world not to be able to succeed at this business. The tools are there and the people are here. And I want to be clear that I didn't, I wasn't super coach with my team. I'm not as, I'm not in the position I am because I was able to handhold with everybody. I, I could not. I'm in a third world country. I'm raising, uh, you know, a little guy that couldn't even use a toilet. I, you know, you know, at seven or eight years old, I, it wasn't, it wasn't an easy thing I was doing. And my team understood that and they networked amongst themselves too, to be able to learn and go along as they did. And the, and the other thing about that is that, um, I never was even now, three years later, I learn more from my team than they learn from me. I, I keep myself in a very open place to learn and um, I'm so grateful. I do that with not only my team and business, but I do this with parenting. Some of my best parenting things that I'm learning now are coming from these young girls with, you know, two kids. I mean, you just never, never stop learning and never think that you're, that you can't learn from your team and who's below you. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful to them really now, because I, honestly, even to this day, I pick up so many incredible things from a lot of my teammates. Um, so a lot of it was trial and error. Um, again, the whole coaching thing, don't, don't whine about who's coaching you or who's above you and who's not. There's just absolutely no excuses. I don't want to hear about it anymore. And don't say you don't have time. And I'm going to talk a little bit about this and a little bit about tools and a little bit about things that, that I did, even in the midst of not being in this country or the other funny part about that was that uh, a little off subject was that we left Guatemala in October, literally within one week, came from Guatemala, got home in shell shock with all of our kids again after a year there. The culture shock was ridiculous. Jumped on a plane a couple days later to go to Rome uh, with the Coovers for President's Quest and then went right to Paris after that. This is all within a matter of a week, five days of getting on and going and just, you know, having this whirlwind of these things and I'm not even understanding how I got there. And, and truly, I still don't understand it. So there's so, many, there's so many things that are good about kind of not putting the pressure on yourself to understand or know everything and, and just to operate kind of sloppy, but just operate. That's just the bottom line. So a couple of things I wanted to talk about, um, and I pulled out some props, are that uh, um, a lot of our business tools have nothing to do with isogenics. It's just about life in general. And um, some of my biggest obstacles in life never changed. I, you know, I still look back sometimes and I think, oh my gosh, I don't even know how I'm a parent and how I'm a grandparent or how I succeeded at anything for the most part because I always thought of myself as so spazzy and my my like Deanna can tell you she had to give me a pep talk before I do anything and Tracy you know that's just where where I'm at um I I never I never had any incredible tools with two kids or 15 kids I I, I just do what I do but I want to share some things with you guys that really changed some stuff for me so 
one thing that I really realized was a problem was stuff, distractions, and um, accumulating things. And something I learned about when I was going to Guatemala, you know, with all of my kids and a house that had a 10 by 10 foot living room and an even smaller dining area and little teeny tiny bedrooms, you know, we pretty much went with nothing. And coming back to the States was very overwhelming and very distracting in so many ways. So I learned the simplicity of being there it was a big deal. And um, one of the biggest things that helped me so much, I don't know if you guys have heard of this book. It is absolutely incredible. I highly suggest it. The life-changing magic of tidying up. It is incredible. Let me put back up. <laughs> this is a quick little book that has literally changed my life. I, I am not kidding to all of my people. I tell them, get rid of your crap. Go through it. Does it spark joy? If it doesn't, get rid of it. And that goes to everything, even furniture. Just anything that you have that, that um, doesn't bring you joy or actually distracts you. Gives you, you know, why do you have something from your drunk aunt that was, you know, mean to you when you were a kid and you remember standing next to that buffet with your nose in the corner? Um, you know, why do you have that? You know, with just thinking about things that are distracting and not fulfilling, I really went on a mission to get rid of a lot of things. Um, this was another excellent book for me. A lot of, um, a lot of Susan Sly's things I apply to my life. This whole five minute thing. I really only do have five minute <laughs> intervals. And, um, this, this really helped me in a lot of ways. It, it kind of contradicted some of this stuff, but what I do really is I gather and glean information. I'm constantly learning. And I, even at this point now, three years later, successful at the business, um, I'm always grabbing things to, to learn. Another thing I want to talk about and give you, so, you guys permission to, to um, fail and then snap back up is these little journal things. Planners. I was the worst note keeper the worst list writer. I mean, that is like the principle of everything. I can tell you that I got to the stars that I got without making lists all the time. I couldn't, I couldn't wrap my head around doing it. And slowly I've evolved into changing those things. And I want to show you something. This is washi tape. In case you don't know. For some of us creative people, like I like to do things, I always like to make things. So if I don't do it right and colorful and whatever, then I, it's just lost me. But I also learned that a lot of that was perfectionism. So I want to show you that. Here's when I started my January tracker. And uh, I didn't do it. <laughs> I put it away. And I really could not bring myself to do it. Well, good thing about washi tape is you cover it up and it looks cute so that when you start again and get rolling on it, that you have a fresh start. And I want to be clear that it's okay to blow it and it's okay at any point in time to start again and again and again. That is a story of my life. I'm not really good at, at keeping up with things like this, but I keep trying and the more grace I give myself in those areas, the more easy it is for me to continue to, um, to implement these little things in my life and not do have an all or nothing mentality. Cause that's one of my biggest problems is an all or nothing mentality. And, uh, I think that while I've been very successful, I think that that all or nothing thing also can hurt, can hurt me and hurt hurt my team. So um, I've been really clear about this whole all or nothing thing, even with working out, you know, we're, we're in this fitness thing. And so many of us think, well, if you can't give it all, then, you know, I'll wait till tomorrow till I can. And that was something else too, that I had to start to give myself permission to be like, wait a minute. Okay. I don't have two hours to work out today, but I can get my butt on that Peloton for 20 minutes or 30 minutes. And you know, this isn't for anybody else. This is for me. So I finally had to be like, I wrote out a commitment to myself about certain things that I was going to do. 
And um, that was one of them. And I've been just, just faithful with one little thing at a time. That whole thing of always thinking we have to have everything and do everything and get it done. It's not humanly possible. It's not possible if you have one kid or 15 kids. It just doesn't happen. So to slowly do one little thing and, and then roll it on to another thing. I've been adding, slowly adding things to myself and having a whole different perspective, even at 46 years old, where it sounds like all this stuff has been accomplished. These things sound so, so, you know, fundamental and so simple, but it, that stuff does not come simple to me. And I'm learning more and more that we can put these images on, on Facebook and, and all the social media. And it looks like, you know, we all have to have it all together. And, we're setting a standard that's not true. And so I like to be really clear with, with, uh, with my team, almost, like I said, to a fault and, and, um, with whoever I, I convey anything to be it in ministry, being it about adoption, being, um, you know, anything with the business, especially, um, and you know, that leads me into some other things here as far as, uh, like relationships are concerned. Um, for me to, we came from a really, like Kyle was a hardworking, blue collar guy, you know, up and out the door, three thirty, four o'clock in the morning, worked all hours, you know, and, and here in Chicago, he was out the door, you know, not only at those hours in the morning, but in temperatures that, you know, I can't even stick my toe out the door, I'll pass out. Um, we, we had a lot of adjusting to do. When I say I retired him at five months, you know, when I started, that sounds awesome and it would sound awesome to me, but I didn't realize some of the things that happen dynamic wise when you, as the mom who'd been staying at home all this time, suddenly start to make some money and then suddenly start to surpass your husband's income and, and are in a place to be able to at some point retire them. And there was a lot of weird dynamics that came with that. And uh, a lot of weird pride and, and issues and stuff that he, he, he can talk about so much better than me, but a lot of attention needed to be paid to even that. I mean, even that was sloppy, started to make money and it's sloppy too. So, so as we started to make more and more money, the, um, the, uh, the sloppiness and the weirdness of that started to become magnified that, that we all are in our little roles and in our little um, comfy places. And um, something comes in and throws a monkey wrench, even if it's a good monkey wrench, it kind of started to set some weird, weird um, vibes in our house. And I think that Deanna Felchick, she's on here too. I think we, we both had seen some of this stuff and it's very common. And it, it, it got to a point where, um, we had to become support support to each other. Now, like I said, Kyle says it better than me and talks about how he had to overcome that weird role and and Kyle and uh Kyle had to come alongside me and then we both had to kind of reevaluate each other's strengths and weaknesses and and not allow that stuff to kind of taint the beauty of the things that were going on. But I just want to put a warning out there that that's that's really an issue. And as you're building your business, um, something else that's more important is, is establishing clear boundaries. You know, you have your values as a family, um, your values as whatever other passion you're motivated by, your values as a mom, uh, your values as a, as a coach and leader of your team. And something I cannot convey strong enough is to create boundaries. And I said this for two and a half years, finally in my third year now, um, the last six months or so, I finally began to um, really mean what I said with boundaries. I had to be clear with my team. This is what I can do. This is what I can't do. This is when I can be around. This is when I can't be around. Um, I'm a mom first and foremost uh, and wife. And, you know, those kind of things, um, it's so easy. Like in the beginning, I was so obsessed with being available at all times to anyone, whenever they needed me, everything's dinging. I had two email boxes, instant message, Facebook, you know, wall, 
every way to get a hold of me. And I felt like uh, this disgusting umbilical cord attached to it. Like I had to hurt, you know, I had to be there for everybody. And then I was only partially there for my family. And it started to really disgust me. Like I was not there. It was, I could be anywhere and I, I wasn't there, believe me. And it was not healthy. It was not, it was not, um, it, it was not worth, um, don't, don't get me wrong. Cause the business is amazing, but that nothing is worth not feeling, uh, when you go to bed at night that you did the best you could with your first ministry, your first love, which is your husband and your kids. And, um, so it took me two and a half years. Like I said, even though I kept trying to say to myself and to everybody else, this has to happen. Finally, in the last few months, I have really, really done it, really begun to stick to it, not be apologetic to anybody about it. I mean, other than, oops, sorry, because, you know, this is the way it's going to be now. Um, and uh, it has helped me tremendously. I, I wake up in the morning and go to bed at night with a clear, much more clear conscience about what um, what I'm doing and that um, my whole life isn't isn't isogenics. My whole life is something else and isogenics is my vehicle. Um, it's not healthy. Another thing I just did, I just did it today and I'm so proud of myself and Tracy helped me, um, was to take Facebook off my phone and only keep Instagram on there. So Instagram goes into my Facebook. So I can still post on Facebook without having to have Facebook all the time because I don't know about you guys. Some people can get on Facebook and they're there for their, you know, 12 seconds and they're right off. That's not me. My brain doesn't work like that. In fact, I have more of a, almost an addictive type brain and personality where I need to have stimulation. I'm always, I'm so used to going, going, going that even with something like that, it sucks me in like a vacuum. And before you know it, you've wasted an ungodly amount of time flipping through the darn thing, you know, or you're talking to your kid and you're looking at Facebook and you, you're not even making eye contact with the person you're actually speaking to. And you don't even care about what you're looking on Facebook. So that was one big thing I did. I know it sounds crazy because I built my whole business pretty much by Facebook, but I'm realizing now that the time that was wasted really doing that, not, not Facebook in general, but the time I personally wasted. So now I've set boundaries with that too, where it's not on there. I don't have access to it on my phone. I do have instant messenger on there, but I will allocate time specifically that's Facebook time and only give myself a certain amount of time to do it because really that is a vacuum and that is going to be a troublemaker. And if you really did evaluate the amount of time, I would say 98% of people would kind of have their stomachs turned by the amount of time that they, that they waste. And it's a waste on there. Not that you don't want to catch up with people. Give yourself time, have a certain amount of time that you're actually, how many times do you flip through that thing and you're flipping and you're flipping and you're reading everybody's posts and you get back to the first one you started with and then you refresh it again and look at the whole darn, I mean, how many times do you have to do that? I do it all the time. I catch my kids doing it and it makes me sick. So really I'm on kind of a mission to, I, I don't think we need to have that kind of focus on what everything is going on and, and right, Tracy, no one needs, you don't need to have, nobody needs to have our answer right this minute. You know, they can, if it's 10 o'clock and they're messaging, they can wait till noon when I get on there. And really what I'm trying to do is be clear with everybody what my boundaries are um, that way. Um, it's just such a thief of time and attention and that, that feeling you get when you go to bed at night that, oh my gosh. I don't hardly recall eating, speaking a word to kid number, you know, nine, <laughs> you know, did I even see her today? Like, that's horrible. It's horrible. And even with less kids, I know that people feel like they didn't do it. They didn't measure up. They, you know, they got nasty because they were so busy trapped in Facebook land and, and answered sharply when their kid was trying to talk about something else. I mean, nobody can tell me they don't do it. I've seen it. I've heard it all. We, we talk, you know, so I just, I want to spare people more of that and, and to, to, to be successful at this business, we don't have to have a filthy umbilical cord attached to every last 
social media outlet at the time people want us to. We have the power to set our time and to do it with precision and focus instead of half ass doing it whenever, you know, over you're stirring your pot of spaghetti and wiping a butt and changing a diaper. That darn phone never left my hand. So, <laughs> Deanna, so, and I know that's the truth with most everybody because I see it all the time. I'm just observing these things. Um, another thing uh, that I wanted to, to point out that was so true for me was this whole, you get out what you put in thing. And while that's true to an extent, I want to make something clear that life happens. And especially in these businesses where we're mothers, um, a lot of us, and especially in the adoptogenics group, have kids with traumatic backgrounds. Um, tons and tons of us, whether it's adoptogenics related or not, have kids with special needs of some sort at this point in time. And even kids with, without special needs have special needs periodically. Um, and life happens. And we have to... Um, we have to give ourselves the grace to understand that sometimes we can't put in the, you know, 100% that we want to. And, and, and we have to allow for circumstances to be the circumstances we're in. It is what it is. And I want to I be clear on a couple of things that I found really interesting that I've observed. So I'll go on binges and benders because sometimes that's all life allows me to do because life gets complicated here. and. Um, so I will spend a whole bunch of time making contacts, responding, getting goofy. And, um, then all of a sudden we're out of the country. You know, we just left, we were just in Guatemala for a week. We were just in Florida two times in the last 30 days, two Florida trips and one Guatemala trip. You're not really effective when you're on the road one way or the other. I'm not, I mean, I do the best I can, but I'm not. But I'm realizing now that the seeds that I plant and the times I'm able to really do what I need to do tend to bloom and pop when I'm unable to do things. I find that oftentimes when I'm in, I'm at rest, and I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't mean be lazy and not do stuff. But what I'm saying is when we obsess less and move organically and naturally the way this business is designed to be this isn't designed to be it's like homeschool you're not doing a uh, regular school at home it's a whole different animal this business is a whole different animal and when we move in it organically i find that when you are forced to step back a little bit that is when my business grows more so than when i'm you know beating feet and you know trying so hard to do what I got to do or what I set my plans to do. Nothing returns void. These things that we do and the times that we can do it and, and do it consistently when we can, when we have to step back, when our kids are sick, when our kids are in the hospital, when you have to travel, when you're on a mission trip, these things will multiply for you. It just happens. It just seems to be this this reciprocity theory that is at work. And, and, uh, you know, in, in my book, it's God that says, Hey, I'm, I'm there when you're resting. You don't have to be, you don't have to be spinning your wheels, you know, 24 seven, which is really what started to burn me out so much. And I really want to, I want to spare my team that. So now my focus isn't on, Oh my gosh, I have to be a millionaire by whatever, make my bazillion by this state. I might not keep up with everyone. Um, you know, my life doesn't allow for a lot of things that other people can do. I'm not a handholder coach. I'm not a handholder to my associates, really. Um, it's just not who I am. It's not who I'm able to be. Um, but I give myself the grace to accept that. And I'm very open to my, my team about it and to my, um, to my, um, the people that I coach as far as cleansers and whatever. Um, and I'm finding that that is what has um, helped me settle into a sweet spot. And probably the most successful sweet spot was to lay off myself a little bit. I don't, I don't need to know everything. I don't need to do everything. I don't need to respond to everybody right now. And my kids 
are more important and my husband's more important than anybody else. So by putting them first and putting them on their pedestal where they belong, um, I'm finding that, that uh, the respect of that reality and value in my life is what helps to make my business and my life far more successful um, and, and a life that doesn't make sense on paper. So when you say it out loud and I listen to it, I think, holy moly, but I know that these few little ingredients is what kind of set that ball into motion and what keeps that ball in the air. So I, I mean, that's pretty much all I had to say. <laughs> I don't know if you had any questions. I'm sure everybody's going to have a lot of questions, Carolyn. I want to give them a second to think about those. You are just, thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm just, it's, it's amazing. And I, and I appreciate so much that you talk about grace and allowing us some time to grow and, and be okay with where we're at. Right. It's such a key. It's been a key really my whole life, but it's more magnified now. Um, and just that whole, you know, I always say what a spaz and how sloppy I am, but a lot of those things are, are really, uh, a spirit of perfectionism yeah. and, and it really has no business here. You, you'll succeed. You'll succeed wildly, but you are not going to feel good when you, I keep pointing over here cause my bed's over there. When you lay your head on that pillow, you're not going to feel good about it. No matter how successful you are, if we do this in a way that's not honoring and respecting our values that are first and our ministries that are first, which are our, our families and our friends and our close relationships. And when you regard them where they belong, um, everything else does seem to organically fall into place. Right. So your story is so impactful because you are a mother and you are doing so many things. And I love that you talked about how Isogenics is a vehicle and when resources, you know, what was, what is it, what you said? Passion meets resources. Yeah. When passion meets resource. That's so cool. I know there's uh, several people here that have large families. My sister's on the call. She has 11 kids at home. So I know there's a lot of people that relate to your story and it's just so beautiful. Um, but one of the questions I think that would, that everybody has kind of talked to me about is, um, as a busy mom, as a wife, as, you know, you're involved in church, you're involved in so many, you know, just amazing movements. Um, you know, John Maxwell talks about the role of five. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure you've, you've heard his whole thing of swinging the ax of the tree, right? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so really quickly, cause we have the time. So really quickly. So John Maxwell talks about, you know, if you sharpen your ax and you go outside and you take five swings at a tree and then you go inside and the next day you come back out, you take five more swings at the tree and you go inside. Next day, repeat. Next day, repeat. Eventually, what's inevitably going to happen is the tree's going to fall down, right? You're going to fell it. It has to happen. But most people go outside and they take five swings at one tree and then the next day, five swings at a different tree. And the next day, five swings at another tree. And I know that I could relate to this when he shared it. And it's been so powerful for me of, you know, um, his, his premise was we were born to do incredible things. Like we were born to just do so many wonderful things, but one at a time, you know, one thing at a time. And you touched on that so many, so many times tonight. So what are a few things, maybe five, but what are a few things that you feel like you do daily you know, what would be your five things? You know, he, he says that you really need to figure out what five things you should do every day to reach that goal, your one goal, like what your goal is right now. So what would be some of your daily actions that have helped you be successful? I can say that you can do that like a spaz and you can hack around all kinds of trees and you can still be very successful. But like I said, you're going to be miserable and so is your family. And, uh, you know, we, like I said, we have to go to bed with at night yourself when you're just alone and you have to think about this stuff. My whole goal is to not, not have that. So I, I was, I was very successful, you know, pounding on all kinds of trees. And that is what, where I've really escaped from and where I'm really seeing light shining on now and where I can kind of share my testimony to prevent other people from, from making some of the mistakes that I did. Um, 
And, you know, first and foremost, the first thing would be definitely self-care. And I'm not good at that. I never was. I would forget to eat all day long. This is things that, like, I realized I wasn't feeling well and why, you know, things were going awry, why my brain didn't work right. I'm like, you know, why, why can't I think straight? Oh, that would be because I hadn't eaten since, you know, since 7 a.m. and it was coffee and it's now 3 o'clock and I can't figure out why my brain's not working. That was before. That was old Carolyn. So one of the things that lended um, to my whole experience with isogenics was that immediate issue of taking care of myself and having a no-brainer way to take care of myself because I have a, a very um, hyper-focused brain. So when I'm on something, I'm on it. I don't need to eat. I don't need to drink. I barely need to breathe. I don't even know if I did for sure. And um, so this no-brainer method of taking care of myself was, was first and foremost. So every single day, I am absolutely taking care of myself. And something that I've had to do because I still forget is to actually list out things that people would probably think is crazy. Do I need to list out? Use my supplements, use my essential oils, use my whatever, you know, get dressed down to shoes. I write it out because I have to. <laughs> and you know what? I get a thrill out of checking it off now, you know. <laughs> get a thrill out of checking off. I put my stinking clothes on down to my shoes, you know, and every little thing I do in between because it really makes me feel better. It makes me feel good. And in the days you question whether, you know, it's a been a whole blur because you spent, you know, 90 minutes on Facebook accumulated in the day and you feel like I didn't get anything done. Um, you have, you have evidence that you did. So I would say now it's that it's definitely that self care thing, make it a priority, write it down. Um, I know that's you. That's why I say this stuff because people don't like to talk about that fact that we do these things. Um, every once in a while, a little bubble will pop up and I can see what they're saying. Um, <laughs> and uh, definitely to prioritize sleeping, making sure I'm getting to bed at night, not having the stinking phone and the stinking computer in my bedroom anymore at night. I didn't realize how much it was affecting my ability to sleep and sleep soundly. The other thing that I started to realize was having my laptop on my bed, you know, across my ovaries, for God's sake, you know, for hours on end is probably not a real good idea. <laughs> Got to stop that. So really, a lot of what I do every day to be successful it has to do so much uh, with self-care and making sure that I'm okay and that I'm making good and smart decisions for my brain that works uh, rapid fire and seems to work faster and more bizarre than other people's, but not necessarily everyone. Cause I know, like I said, that a lot of people tend to have these tendencies, but who wants to admit it? So that's me. I'll do it. Um, so the self care is sleeping at night, total boundaries um, with certain things, making lists for the, for the most simple of things, because that's important too. Um, connecting with my, my husband and my kids and making, making that a priority. Because again, the things that are important are what happen when the lights are going out and I got to think about what happened all day. Um, so I'm really focusing on those things first, which allows me to do, to do what I do. I'm not seeing these messages. I do see who they're coming from, so I'm a little scared to even look. Um, <laughs> Carolyn, I just, you said that you had, I, I told all the women to, to move the um, laptops away from their ovaries, and then Trish says that she's taken all of the technology out of the bedroom, and I said, all technology with a question mark? <laughs> You're so ridiculous. Sorry. Uh, why do I'll I? Mute, I'll I, mute I, myself I, again. I knew it had something to do with you. You notice um, that there's a long shot. I had my laptop on my pillow near my ovaries, so I was just removing them back. I'm advocating for your ovaries. Don't do that. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and then, you know, the other thing is to pursue other passions um, and do it religiously and not just focus on what we're doing, not, not get obsessive about all the things we tend to in this industry get so overly obsessed about. 
And uh, I think that those things are what um, are enabling me and allowing me to be more and more successful now as time goes on. And then again, to um, coming to terms with the fact that I, I'm not, I'm not racing anyone. I don't need to be more successful than anybody else. I don't, I take more of a thrill out of watching people pass by me. If that's what has to happen. I'm not obsessed about any part of that. I'm, I'm more about wanting to live the life that we know we were designed to live and allowing this to be, uh, allowing this to be what pushes us through as a, as a, you know, as a tool to get us to where we're meant to be and meant to go. Um, and it, and that so far exceeds being a network marketer and being, you know, all that is isogenics. Wow. So awesome. So awesome. I think it's a good reminder to everybody to it, you know, it, it sounds cliche, but to enjoy the journey, to enjoy every day, we're all getting so healthy. We all feel so great. But then what do we do? We immediately start, beating ourselves down because we're not at the next goal and the next goal and the next goal. So thank you for that. That really hit home here. So does anybody have, we just have a few minutes before we got to jump off. Um, does anybody have any questions you want to ask Carolyn? Feel free to unmute your mic and, and ask. If you don't want to do that, ask it in the chat and I'll make sure she hears it. Um, and then you have a few thoughts in the chat box, Carolyn. So if you can see those, they're, sharing some messages. Remember that all the growth happens in that unfamiliar zone. So feel free to get scary and unmute your phone, ask any questions you have. You guys are chatty. <laughs> well, you know, I don't really have a question, but I think Carolyn was talking to each one of us individually about all of our issues. <laughs> so I think we all felt you very much in our hearts. And I thank you for that. And I feel like the biggest liberty gibbet most of the time trying to get through all of this. But uh, now I know everyone else feels the same way. Yeah. I don't even know what a liberty gibbet is. So thank you for. <laughs> I'm, I'm writing that down. <laughs> I think it's a Disney ter term. I think I heard it in the park during the Mar Mary Poppins scene. Right. Right. Well, I don't know. I think it's a Texas thing. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, Soraya, do you want to share something, Hen? I feel like I need to pull her out. Come on, Soraya. Everybody, you can just mentally, come on, Soraya. Soraya, It's all right. I usually have clean. I can't usually talk without crying. Just so you know, ask Deanna. I cannot usually give a, te a testimony. I can't usually function too far without. It's okay. She just unmuted her phone, Carolyn. So I think she's ready. Oh. <laughs> well, I thought it was amazing. Um, sorry, I'm walking into another room because all my kids are in the family room. Um, no, I just feel like I'm going to cry because I'm constantly battling. <sighs> I'm going to. I'm constantly battling. Like, I have 13 people I take care of. And, like, today, I mean, <sighs> honestly, I haven't even looked in the mirror. I am still wearing my clothes from this morning. I went shopping and did 15 billion errands. And <sighs> I literally had no time to connect with anybody or... Um, well, I say that and I know I'm going to get reamed, but I feel like I have no time, <laughs> but, um, I don't know, to meet new people and to find people to share with and to just, I don't know, uh, I open up and I'll do it for a week or so. And then I have to shut it back down because I feel like I get so far behind with my family. You know, and that's okay. That's what I'm kind of talking about, doing those benders. And then when you can't, you simply, you're going to watch that stuff manifest. And the more you, you know, manifest into something good. And the more you're able to forgive yourself for not, for not feeling like that, for not, um, for not uh, being able to do that consistently for, you know, 
like you think everybody else is doing it. Cause let me tell you something. They're not, and I don't care how many kids they have. Um, it's like, it draws more success to you. The more you can envision it outside of your actions, it's, it's the epitome of grace. The more you can envision yourself succeeding regardless of your actions or your lack of actions, the more it seems to manifest, it is a, it is a godly, whatever you believe, it is a godly principle. It draws, you know, whatever you believe, I don't know. It draws it, it draws it to yourself. I can't even explain it, but I've seen this phenomenon over and over and over again. And it's up here. And it is truly that attitude and that thought process of not of not um, beating yourself up over it and being like a little kid and just ex expecting the gifts to, to come to you. I don't mean be lazy about it. I mean, you want this. You can tell you want this. Um, so that's half the battle. The rest of the battle's up here. So I would just say, cut yourself some slack. Get a pedicure. <laughs> you know, you, you can't, none of us can do what you want to be doing and then think that we're going to be able to, to take care. Do you homeschool too? No. <laughs> I'm looking at all your stuff behind you. Oh, no, that's just, I have a million reminders for everything, post-its, everything everywhere. Well, good. What you gotta do. At least you're there with the list making and stuff. I could never do that until the last couple of months. So, but you know, really, again, it's it's in your it's in your head is what you're gonna draw to yourself. So the more you're piling on yourself of of this this feeling like you're failing, the more that you'll deflect these gifts that are just waiting to come to you and these people that are waiting to come into your life. I literally. I mean, I pray specifics into my life and I, I believe more than anything. That's why I got where I am. I, if I need, I tell my team this too. They're like, I need somebody powerful on this side and I need a business builder here. And you know, I'm always like, then we, then we pray it in. It might not be tomorrow. It might be next week or it might be six months from now, but, but pray it in and be consistent about, about um, monitoring your thoughts and not feeling guilty and if you're feeling guilty about the time not spent with your kids then that's the cue that you need to try to try to um do what i did and basically cut off certain things and trust that what i poured into it is going to manifest you're doing good <laughs> hey and you can message me anytime i'll talk you off a ledge Alrighty, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Soraya, for sharing your heart. And this is why I love this company. I love this movement. I just, I'm so grateful for this. I mean, this is incredible, guys. This is what you are a part of. That two strangers can connect and just love each other. Like, how cool is this? Gosh, I don't remember the little sleep tonight, but. Thank you guys so much for, bring, for being here, for bringing your energy, for immediately loving each other and supporting one another. Carolyn, you were just absolutely fabulous. And, and I know you don't, you say you're not as great as you are, but you really are because you're genuine and you're just, you're doing the do. So thank you so much for inspiring us and for helping us. So guys, please, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts and feedback. You can share it in your pages, tag us. Um, let us know what you took away from tonight and what you're going to apply in your own lives. All right. Good luck. Have a fabulous week. We can't wait to see you next week. Next week, we kind of have a big deal, you know, getting on the call. She's, she's kind of cool. She's kind of funny. She's kind of classy. Has a great voice. <laughs> We're going to have a great time next week. So please get yourselves ready and make sure everybody knows about it. Have a fabulous night. Thank you. You're welcome.